Hi, welcome to Too Many Gadgets. Today we are covering beginner tips for using a Tesla Model 3. This video is for all of you who either have just picked up a Model 3 or are going to. So this is just a, a few pointers that I wanted that I found out myself by reading the entire manual and using my Tesla now for like one, one and a half month. So this is not like expert tips, but stuff that you will uh, find helpful uh, when, when using this car and getting the most out of it. So the first thing you want to do is pretty much to press the driving icon here go onto, onto the display menu, and then you can set the language for your uh, region. So if you aren't using English, again, there are multiple options here to choose from, from German, uh, Spanish, French, uh, French Canadian, Italian, uh, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, UK, and Denmark, right? So those are the options to choose from, uh, so that uh, also when you are using the voice commands, that will match your region. So the second menu I encourage you to uh, to familiarize yourself with is the driving menu, and especially the, this point steering mode, because default uh, it's set to standard, and then you have two other options. You have the sport, which is let's say a more rigid steering uh, wheel experience, and the comfort, which is the other end of the scale, with with a very loose steering wheel. So find out, you know, try these three uh, items out and see which one uh, suits you the most. This is not uh, one size fits all, and this is tied to your profile menu, so you don't have to use the same profile for every person in the household. Moving on to the autopilot menu, I encourage you to turn on auto steer, which will allow the car to be self-driving, and the full self-driving visualization preview, which is one of the new options here in the 2020, which uh, allows that car to identify uh, traffic lights and such. When you pick up the car, it's actually quite noisy when you are crossing speed limits, but sometimes you are not actually crossing speed limits, but the car's map uh, speed limit information might be wrong, hence the car will then think you are speeding and try to warn you. And the default sound level of that is actually quite high and quickly becomes annoying. So I advise you to change the speed limit from chime to display. Next menu we're going to explore is the safety and security, where in according to the whole, again, car being too noisy, you uh, are advised to turn on this menu that's called Geo Mode, which is, again, pretty much a method of making the alert sounds in the car less noisy than the default setting. A key feature of this car is the profile system, which allows me to have different settings for some of these features that I just uh, went in through than my wife. So if we look here, uh, you can see that right now it, the profile is set to me and my wife could uh, press on this, uh, her name, and then it would change to her. But it's actually possible for the car to identify by itself which person is entering the car using the phone that you are using so keys. So the way you do this is that you press the drive icon and then you go to locks. And with me now being the active profile, I can see the list of uh, phones and cards that can open this car. And if I press and hold on this icon next to my phone, you will see that it's saving. So now it combines my phone with, my, with the profile called Martin. And now the car will automatically set this, uh, the profile Martin when I'm entering the, the car. So the obvious things that are tied to your profile are how you have adjusted the seat, how you've adjusted the mirrors and the driving wheel. But there are actually more settings that are tied to your profile and some of them might not be that obvious. One being like the AC. If you can see here, if I go into the AC and I start changing you know, the direction of the airflow, you can see here that it's actually saving this to my profile. So that's also something that's tied to your personal preferences and then hence can be adjusted accordingly. It's worth taking a little bit of time to adjust the seat correctly. The first left control here can go back and forth, but can also adjust the seat both in the front section and the back section, so those are individual. The circular button to the far right is for the lumbar support, but note that that is not tied to your profile. 
So one thing that's not that intuitive either is how you get the car into neutral. So you know that by you, if you need to put the car into reverse, you pull the brakes and you put the shifter upwards, it goes into reverse. And similar, if you put it downwards, it goes into drive. If you want to put it into neutral, you put it up, but ever so slightly and hold it steadily for a couple of seconds. And then you can see it goes into neutral. One of the key features of the Tesla is the autopilot. Right now, I have the autopilot set accordingly to the speed limit zone that I'm in, to 50. But in a couple of seconds, I'll move into a different zone where the speed limit is then 70, but the car will not adjust automatically. You'll have to do that manually. We should see, right, so now the, the zone has shifted, but you can see here, it's still for me set to 50. The way to change that easily, instead of using the wheel to, to turn the autopilot up and down, is just press on the speed limit zone sign, and then you'll see that the, the autopilot will adjust to that setting. So that's the easy way to adjust the autopilot when moving in and out of different zones. The car has two USB connectors hidden underneath the front cover. One of them you'll need to use for a USB thumb drive to save your sentry mode clips and the other one can you use for charging your phone. But if you just remove this piece of plastic cover, you can make the charging cable go through the loop in the lower section and then reattach the cover and then it will sit more nicely, like this. In order for your USB thumb drive to work with the sentry mode, you need to format it correctly. Format it using the FAT32 file system, and after which you need to create a folder named specifically Tesla Cam with capital T and capital C. After you've been using the drive, you'll get these three folders. Hope you found this useful. If you have any other pointers from uh, your experience with driving a Tesla that could be helpful for other newcomers, please leave a comment with your suggestion. If then, and if there are enough good suggestions, I can perhaps make another video with those. Else, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.